All right, so in the first module today, we are going to look at imaging defects and particularly using optical microscopy. So microscopes are needed in order to observe most defects because defects tend to be small. And so um, we're gonna start talking about what we can get from um, optical microscopes. So um, grains or what we call crystallites and uh, grain boundaries uh, can vary in size. Uh, they can actually be quite large. Uh, so this is actually uh, a, a, an image from Wikipedia showing uh, zinc grains, uh, particularly from galvanized steel. So galvanized steel is steel coated in a layer of zinc. And those zinc crystals can be so large that you actually see them so uh, there are light posts here in Lexington, um, as well as uh, some garbage cans that are made out of galvanized steel. And so if you see one of those, take a look and you'll notice that you can see um, texture and each of these uh, different things is a different grain in that material. So these you can view by eye, right? They're quite large. However, most grains are quite small. So uh, we're talking on the millimeter or less uh, usually on the micron scale. Um, and so we typically need a microscope to view those um, smaller features. So this is kind of the exception to the rule. So we need an optical microscope to reveal these micro scale features like grains and grain boundaries. And so uh, optical microscopy uh, is useful up to about 2000 uh, times magnification and what we do to observe the structure of the grain structure is we basically first need to get a flat plane. And so we polish a material until we remove any sort of surface features. So typically there's scratches on a surface and so forth. So we polish it to get it to be very mirror um, flat. And then what we do is since we're not gonna be able to see anything differently, um, with that material, uh, what we do is we apply some type of etchant. And so an etchant is a uh, chemical that can um, preferentially um, eat away or dissolve or oxidize a material, a certain part of the material relative to the other. And that allows us to see differences in the structure. And so we'll take a look at um, how we do that. So, for example, grain boundaries. We can expose grain boundaries by chemical etching. So, like we uh, showed in one of the previous modules, grain boundaries, again, are imperfections. Uh, they are more chemically reactive, which means they're more susceptible to this chemical etchant. Um, and so what we can do is we can um, apply this etchant, which is typically a, an acid, a liquid acid, and it dissolves the boundary between grains preferential to the actual grain itself. And so we get this little surface group because it's dissolving and uh, reacting more at the boundary where everything's more loose. Um, and what that does is that if we're looking at the microscope, these are meant to be light waves coming in and reflecting back. Uh, well, what happens in this sort of surface group is that those light waves get scattered and so they get scattered and so you don't see that light and so they're revealed as dark lines. And so when you see the image, you typically see the light region surrounded by the dark region where the light is getting scattered in this surface groove. So it's the grain boundary, but it's the grain boundary reacting to the etchant. So you have to, um, you have to um, use this etchant to reveal this kind of surface groove and get preferential um, uh, dis dissolution of that material on the otherwise flat surface. And so that's what we see here. And so um, we can see that. We can also um, see changes in the crystal orientation. So if I go back really quick, um, this also kind of shows different planes. So the lines are meant to represent the planes and the orientation of it. And so you see here on this particular plane, the uh, light uh, reflects off in a given direction, kind of off to the side, whereas on this uh, particular grain, it, the light reflects back to the eye. 
And so here you would see this grain as being light and this one as being dark. So just the orientation can also uh, reveal differences in grains as well. So we don't always need uh, the etched surface or sometimes the etching will expose these lines as well. So not only does do grain boundaries uh, are affected by uh, the etchant, but also differences in grain or plane orientation can show those same differences. And so you get, this is a real image of brass, which shows the darkened uh, grain and then a lighter grain as well. All right. So again, this is just a, this one is actually something we recorded in our lab. And you can actually see that this is a really small sample. So it's only one uh, and a half millimeters across. And you can actually see that there's a number of grains, right? So we're looking um, at sub millimeter grains, but they're almost visible to the, to the eye. So you see a grain here, here, here. And we also have some other interesting, sorry about that, other interesting features. Um, these lines that we see, those are representations of the twin boundaries as well. So not only can we see grain boundaries, but we can also identify other defects like twins. And those are the parallel lines and so we're, that line is representing the mirror boundary between two sections of the same crystal.